Welcome to the downside. We're jumping right in. Light names, yeah. Well, how, what prep did you want? I don't know. Usually you have to figure out. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Marla, I can't talk it, right now. It's his show, and okay. he didn't wow. turn off his show. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, airplane mode. <laughs> my name is Jamarcus Arezzi. I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hi. And my other co-host, a fly, that is going to yeah. be flying throughout the episode. We're here with very special guest, uh, comedian, actor, singer. Wikipedia lies. I, I, <laughs> hey, uh, Dean Edwards. Dean, can you say something negative to kick off this show? Negative? Um, negative to kick off the show. Um, Anything about your life, the I don't, world? I, you know, you know, I'm a positive dude. Listen, so it's like, I, I'm listen, trying to look. When you said, we've had your types before. When you, positive when you said you. When you said that, I was like, I know there's been uh, uh, traffic in New York City bugs me. How's this that? is the downside. One, two, three. Down. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. I uh, listen, this might be a more positive episode because I have to go out the gate. Uh, I I did shrooms for the first oh time my God. on Saturday. Did you really? You're a spiritual so person now. I I'm feel a spiritual it. person. I feel you lighter. This is now the <laughs> upside. It's the upside. Where we talk about all the positives in life and all the things. You're Colors not, are nice. You're now manifesting this podcast into existence. I am. Yeah. I, I, I'm a. I'm a believer. I. I have pushed off shrooms for a long time. Mm-hmm. I've. I've only done pot, and even that, I came too late. What made you push them off? That's interesting. I'm a neurotic. Well, I, it's hard to know. Part of it's like I'm neurotic. Yeah. Existential, angsty. So I have a fear that the drug will lead me down that that path. Interesting. When okay. I get high, I always go through an existential dip. I'll be okay. high, and I'll hit a moment. Where I'll go like, if if I'm in a car, I'll be like, what if I got hit by a car and then I'd be dead? Mm-hmm. And then I go like, oh my God, I'd be dead and I don't want to be dead. And that's, so I was scared shrooms would be an amplified version of that. Ah, interesting. There's also the degree where like, I think the anti-drugs campaign that was like in my childhood, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the eggs in the frying yeah, pan, yeah, yeah. this is your brain on drugs. <laughs> yeah. I think it uh, drugs was effective. Drugs delicious. I think it was effective on yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think it seeped deep in my, so I never, I never looked at drugs as like, a dirty thing. I never right. judged anyone who did drugs. I right. was just scared of what it would do to my brain. I'm the same. I'm the yeah. same. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke or drink. Um, and I find that when you don't, so I, I've actually like my own research has led me to believe that when you don't indulge, people don't trust you as much around them uh-huh. because they don't feel comfortable being themselves. Even though you just said you'll preface it by saying. Listen, I don't judge you. It's not about it's not about you judging them. It's people want to judge you and put you in the same uh, position as them because a lot of people yeah. utilize drugs and alcohol for whatever um, you know escape that yeah. they choose to. Right? Yeah. yeah. You don't choose to do that, and then you get vilified. And you, I think it's the degree of like, listen, I don't know how anyone's sober in comedy. <laughs> it's hard, but I think there's a degree of like, oh. I feel like I can't be a silly because this person is seeing me be silly and they're not in a silly mindset. Right, right, right. But again, that comes down to they're afraid you're going to judge their silliness. Yeah. 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 But I also like, if I was sober, I wouldn't want to be around a bunch of drunk, drunk people. I, you know what? I, I've never found not uh, indulging as an issue just because that was just something. When I was a kid, when Eddie Murphy... Delirious made me want to do this. And I remember when he was out, when he first like blew up, every interview he was in, they were like, So Eddie, you don't smoke or drink? He was like, Nah, I don't smoke or drink. I don't do anything. And but which made sense because his hero, Richard Pryor, did everything and almost killed himself. Sure. Right? Yeah. And so when I see Eddie saying that and he's Mr. Box Office on the cover of Newsweek and, and all his movies, $100 million grossing. I'm like, oh, well, I want to go that route. Sure. And so that, so then it be, by the time I was able to do it, I was like, well, I'm, I've been fine without it. So that you can, you can't sell a benefit. You couldn't sell me, you couldn't find a benefit to me that. Mm, but trying sense. it once, like, I think like shrooms, which now you're an alcoholic. And <laughs> I, but I so desperately, like, I want you to, I, it's now my life's work to get you to do shrooms. Well, tell me about the experience. Yeah. Cause like, sure. Yeah. So like I was, so I didn't know what to expect. We got like, it was very interesting. We got a, a, a 
some dealer service like came to her, like the way they used to do with pot, but now it's mm-hmm. not as much because it's legal. Right. But they come with a backpack and they sent us a shroom hub. Yeah, shroom, and they sent us a text where it was like all the articles we might want to read mm. about the. It's it's funny because the kind of shroom we took it's called penis envy, mm. which because I guess shrooms are shaped like a penis. Mm-hmm. But there's a degree of like guys, this is not going to the Senate. For, for legalization if you're going to make Ted Cruz call it penis envy yeah, right, yeah. Right. Uh, let's come up with a different name but they sent like they sent you a playlist of music they sent you articles wow. so we like we got it was chocolate bars we got two bars one as a backup uh, 10 pieces per bar each had 0.4 grams Okay. and uh, as opposed to eating the shrooms like, like whatever raw yeah. and uh, we did like moderate dose was like 2 grams so mm-hmm. we did like 1.6 and then we added more throughout the day. Tova found this amazing place. This is very bougie. It's on Governor's Island. It's glam. You know, glamping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You have the glamping on Governor's glamping, Island. Glamping, it's yeah. camping. Yeah. It's glamorous oh, camping. It's okay. not really, okay. you know, right. there's yeah. there's no bugs. How right. secluded are you from other people? Are you seeing uh, other people? Well, we take this, like, eight-minute ferry. Uh, uh, there's tents right next to each other, but they're yeah. nice tents with heated mattresses and heaters. Oh, wow. You have to walk to another tent for a bathroom and, like, you zip it down and latch it closed. And it's ch- chilly-ish, mm-hmm. but but you're separate enough. Yeah, right. And right. so like that is glamping. Be, right. Yeah, it's yeah. glamping because we wanted to be. We we were trying to figure out. We wanted to be able to be outdoors and indoors. Right. Okay. Set and setting. That's the big like shrooms thing. What's your set and yeah. what's your mo- all these things? Yeah, yeah. So it was like this f- a, a, amazing, amazing place where we could be in the tent, take the shrooms, then just sit on the porch, look out at the Statue of Liberty, mm-hmm. and uh, it was perfect. We did the shrooms, Tova. We sat across from each other, and she said, let's say our intentions mm. for this trip. And she said, you know, things about connecting and being together. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard for me because I'm like, I'm scared. And she's like, no, no, no. What's your positive intention? Uh-huh. And I said, baby, this is against my brand. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. we, we got it. We got to stay negative. Uh-huh. But I said, you know, uh, uh, you know, to be closer to you and then uh, love you. And she's like, make eye contact. Uh-huh. Interesting. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. And, uh, I, I uh, like Tova. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, I mean, she, yeah. She, she knows me and yeah, she, yeah. she pushed me there. Yeah. And uh, then we took it and we, we go outside. And I think there's a fear of like it's going to be like a walking and then boo, yeah yeah like, yeah but yeah. it was very gradual and, and how how soon like you know because edibles t- can take a couple hours sometimes. 30 minutes like on the dot wow okay. it was also so quick. these chocolates were disgusting yeah the shrooms I mean, are mushroom chocolate. gross <laughs> <laughs> uh so it was just like the way it started things felt very like it's so hard it, it's all cliche Everything you feel and think, it's so fucking cliche. You're yeah. like, humanity is like an organism. Uh, and the universe is just like, it's very <laughs> it's very meta. Like, yeah. it wasn't like nihilism in that, it's not that nothing mattered. It mm-hmm. was just that like, the world moves and it just, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm seeing the organism and I'm going to be back in it soon. But everything became kind of 3D mm-hmm. in, a, in a more visceral way. Yeah. And colors the colors, brighter. Colors brighter. Now, Tova and I, we had this moment. We were, we had all these, we had these like fancy crackers, and she looked through like the nook of a cracker and was like, it's like a telescope. Look at it. If what? you look here, the sky looks okay. purple. And then, <laughs> and then I took it and I was looking through it and I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. And as I'm telling her how amazing it is, I, I accidentally ate the cracker. I put it in my mouth and chomped. And I was like, no, yeah. I, the cracker. I ate the telescope. And we were like, like almost crying, but laughing. And <laughs> it was just, it was, we just, we just talked. Now, and the one thing Tova and I noticed is like, we did not, and this is where we'd be very different with Shrooms Trips. We didn't listen to music for one moment of the Shrooms oh, Trip. Tova see, and I are not music people. Mine would be 100% we music. We just talked. Now, like okay, so this is happening. What if someone were to, in, while this is happening, what do you what do you think your mental capacity would be if all of a sudden someone was like, "Sir, you're standing in the middle of the road." Like if 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 a voice like that cut in, like a, mm, a third party, not high. I move rooms. slow. Like there were other people there, and we were joking. I mean, there were families there, and it's like they, these families are there with their kids, yeah. and there's these two people next door being like, "Look through the cracker." Yeah. No. That's what I, I was yeah, 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 yeah. wondering. But generally pretty what functional. You you That's what was surprising about the from, shrooms is okay. like I think in the, the, the height of the trip we would have been like very like slow and like kind of a little ro- aloof. But after a little bit I was like, oh, we could function. And then we went to – they had like dinner 
and were there. And I think uh, I think Phoebe Robinson was there. Oh, that's funny. Okay. And then someone came up to me who was like uh, uh, worked at Laugh Exchange, which was this app that kind of collapsed a couple years ago. Remember, uh, Uncle yeah, Carson yeah. joined right before it collapsed, as we oh, like yes. to do. And yes. and he comes up and he's like. Jamarco, are you touring? And I'm like, I'm in. I'm looking like shit. I did not expect to see anyone. Right, right, right. But there's a degree of like, oh yeah, we left eight minutes from the city. We're gonna run into people. Here. Yeah. yeah. But I was just like sweats, sweater, and yeah. I was just like, I think I was functional. Now, how many knows? hours do we? How many hours were you high? And like, when did you feel like you weren't high? Anymore? We were like four hours. We put the phones away completely, mm-hmm. so I didn't yeah. have a grasp of time fully. But I'd say four or five hours, and then we added like a little piece of chocolate throughout for to keep it going uh-huh. so super high for five hours started to come down ate some more chocolate and then microdosed essentially until mm-hmm. the end of the night wow so amazing so you think you could do you think you could have done it here in the city, in the city. as I opposed th- to going going because you 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 put yourself in a controlled space where yeah you know and i imagine for safety reasons just, yes. you know just so you, you because then it could just be you and your lady and y'all are just as one in into each other and then slowly the families yeah the neighboring grampers you know you interact with but it's not too much yeah i i think i don't think i'd want to do it here just because it's like it wouldn't be as magical mm-hmm and New York just, you know, you deal with people in New York. I was I was nervous that, like, in the beginning of the trip, I'd walk in the street and be like, baby, look, the car, it looks like it's getting bigger. <laughs> and then he hits right. you. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think I could. I just think, like, I wouldn't want to. Or you could go to Central Park, and you are so entertained, you could just be there for five hours. Right. That's and true. have fun just, like, looking at the yeah. grass. Right. But I think going somewhere felt much more special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want, I want you to do it at some point i'm open um good to know good to ish know. <laughs> uh i think i want to do it in my uh, like apartment roof like setting because i it, i feel like i would be nervous not being in a controlled setting too sure and i wouldn't want to be anywhere roof? well so so i have like a like like a, it's a done up roof like there's oh, okay. couches and things like that oh, okay so like if the weather was nice and we could like yeah yeah, yeah. keep gotcha. it in like a thing so because uh, then we get the outside there's that forest right there um yeah, yeah, we can yeah. maybe go into the forest as an entrance right you're there. not gonna be i'm gonna fly but, yes no 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 no, no, no. I, but i would want it to I be think that's pcp right. in okay. a controlled thing um maybe with someone who wasn't you know sure do you think nicole would do it or do you think, I don't she'd think want she to babysit? would do it but she would babysit probably um i just think it's so i'm so glad i did it <laughs> And it made me go, I didn't feel like great regret, like, why didn't I do this earlier? But mm-hmm. there's, there's, I deal with anxiety, and I'm like, I think this made me feel pretty good. Mm-hmm. I think I'm at an age now where I feel, I feel some new age where I'm like, yeah, let me experiment with some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, just a dash of heroin. Right. What a, oh just a, no. But, <laughs> Look, I but like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> as, I think maybe acid, maybe Molly, even Smidgen though Molly has crack. a dip. No, I would, the furthest I would go is shrooms for me. Mm-hmm. You, I don't think Molly or Acid are necessarily further. I they just freak me out. Don't you want to try heroin at the end? No, because sometimes right people at the like, end, you know, right they show on the those, right on the death Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> since I have the yeah. IVs yeah. in my arm yeah. already, yeah. Yeah, 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 LSD like for di- for dying, doing the shrooms. I mean, truly, I do think there's a degree of like, oh yeah, if I was dying, or if I was towards the end of my life, I'm definitely gonna. That's why I want to do it now, because I'll do some drugs then. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to be fully present for that shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to see the flow of universe <laughs> when I'm about to be part of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, what have you? You do you drink ever? Not. You know what? The most I indulged when I was a kid, I used to make my parents. I used to make my mother screwdrivers. Um, How young? Like two. I young? mean, I mean, yeah. Like <laughs> by by today's standards, like you shouldn't be seven and eight years old uh taking uh some russian stolichnaya or whatever and yeah. and putting it in okay i think i'm supposed to put but uh the orange is supposed to fade away a little um and i'm sure i tasted it i tasting vodka as, as a kid i was like this is rocket fuel this doesn't taste good and the same i hate, thing, it. I hate vodka ugh, ugh. Ugh. yeah and then the same with uh you know my dad drank his heineken's you're drinking a heineken and i would take a sip i was like this looks and tastes like urine so there was yeah. again so as i got older and more mature i was like i'm good and then i saw more and more friends that overindulged right 
Were your parents yeah, yeah. overindulging as well? No, no. They, they, they just no, just they just, just wanted you to make. It. Yeah, they, they, my mother's like, do you know? Go, go make. She didn't say screwdriver. She was like, go make my, go make my drink. And you know, I saw it. So I was like, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you, because parents would have house parties back in the days, yeah. and you know, the ba- you, there was no babysitter. You just went in in their bedroom, you know, and and um, every so often you come out trying to be in the mix, and and uh, oh, and make my, and so you make their drinks, okay, and and, and you know, bring groceries home you you carried the 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 six pack of heineken or whatever so it was no it was, it was no big deal i was you know it's funny i was watching the bad the original bad news bears yesterday uh-huh. um very nostalgic moment because i remember this movie it was a great movie and at the end walter Matthaus um I think uh, his name was but, uh, Butter Butter. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, hey Butterworth, whatever his name was, he hands all the kids after spoiler alert after they lose. Um, he gives all the kids beers, and people are pissed off. But I said back then we did This was a movie that was it was a big movie. Yeah, and no, if that movie came out today, people would lose their minds. How old are the kids in the movie? The kids like, are like eleven or between 12, right? probably nine and twelve. If that, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe 13, 14. But these are these are young kids playing on this little league baseball team. Chico's Bail Bonds. I remember the back of the uh, uniforms. Uh, they were the Bad News Bears. Bad News Bears. But they were drinking beer at the end. And it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. To, yeah. Like it was it, obviously because one of the parents said something about it. But the kids all took it back. And again, I was like, piss. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you like the taste of alcohol when you were younger? No. Yeah. No, no, but no. now you you do like it. I do, yeah. Even straight vodka? No. No, no. I mean, I can do a dirty martini. I like a dirty martini. Oof, that's But I don't poison. like I don't like vodka generally mixed with anything. Like I like or by itself. Like I don't it is the worst for me. Like Wait, I like a gin and I like a whiskey, but outside of I had the vodka when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. I went to a musical theater program. It was my fifteenth birthday, so I had fifteen shots of the cheapest vodka. Fifteen, you could have. 15 shots. Fifteen shots. That's... and you just did shrooms. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. I know it was it was it was crazy. I was with these kids who grew up in New York, uh-huh. and they were doing cocaine in the bathroom, which oh, for oh me my. was shocking. Talk wow. about a drug that I like kind of did once, and I I'm like that's crazy. Cocaine yeah. to me crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, why? Why is cocaine crazy to you? Just the the possibility of death, the possibility of fentanyl. Mm-hmm. Like it just feels more dangerous. Oh, yeah. Shrooms. Not a lot of people seem to die right. from okay. shrooms. Also, to speed up your thoughts or anything would be probably not Chaos. great. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do want to take Adderall though. I'm again. Right. I'm in my drug phase. Your I think I have phase. ADD. Uh-huh. My girlfriend has noticed. She's like, she sees me work, and she's like, "Why would you move to this? Mm-hmm. You were doing this." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think I I think I'm gonna try it. Not laziness, just okay. <laughs> no, 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 not laziness. No, 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 no. I like a focus. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> so where did you grow up? Grew up in uh, the Bronx. Born in the Bronx, raised Mount Vernon, New York yeah. City. Where? How far is Mount Vernon from here? Mount Vernon is the North Bronx. The North Bronx. <laughs> I mean, honestly, does the four, five, six go uh, there? No. Okay. That's the only you know what I mean it's it's literally like you 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 go like this and you're in the Bronx. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what are the what are the downsides of growing up in the Bronx when you did? Um I mean we didn't know it, you know, we didn't I cuz cuz we weren't my family was I would say I guess we were middle class um and most of the people around around me were whatever variation of middle class could have been lower middle class, upper middle class, but it was like right in the middle. Um, when we, when we moved to Mount Vernon, I noticed the the difference was trees were a little greener. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There was a little more space. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we, it seemed more suburban than, than the BX. Then this, I, I was born in the South Bronx, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Soundview and, um, you know, South Bronx is, you know, and that's, you know, rest in peace, Nana and the rest of my family, you know, we all, everybody, that was in that community. I mean, I guess it would be technically a lower income uh, community, but you know, Nana owned her house. Um, uh, you know, and this was a, a block full of black and Latinos. Um, you know, and but I also remember, you know, us finding a uh, a, <laughs> a deserted 
um, parking meter. And me and my brother and, you know, cousin say, oh, let's let's take this. We have no idea where we're going. with. We, you can't just like go anywhere yeah. with a park, a broken parking meter. And I wound up uh, I wound up losing my entire thumb um, thumbnail because we were carrying it. And then no one said, OK, we're putting it down. So when they let go, oh. I didn't. Oh, <laughs> my God. And smashed your thumb. Yes, yeah, smashed my thumb. Ooh. And oh. the entire the entire was it was purple and uh you know <laughs> were you taking it were you trying to get the the money out of yeah, it yeah 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 why was it i mean if it was broken did someone already try you think probably like looking back now yeah, yeah. you know how you look back on the things you did you're like this was dumb yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, there was no i'm sure that we weren't the first people to come upon <laughs> this the parking this, meter this. didn't just fall over right like, right <laughs> you know it because it wasn't yeah. i don't think where we saw it was where it initially would have been yeah you know i mean yeah and um yeah so so smashing you know like all the a lot of bad happened based on uh you know just making bad <laughs> decisions as a young adolescent you're yeah just stupid that's a that's a, a i just a young adolescent's both the same but yeah, <laughs> yeah did yeah. you get in trouble at all um, I think I was probably crying and bleeding too much to sure, to sure. get in any yeah. real trouble. It's like you know the trauma, the 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 initial shock of your your parent you coming home and your your mother seeing that she's focused on that, and then after the fact, they're like, well, what what were y'all doing? You know, I don't even, honestly now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I don't even know if we told the truth. We probably lied. Sure, yeah. sure, we probably lied. You know, Dean yeah. fell off the sixth train. Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, something dumb. Yeah. Um, so you moved to Mount Vernon, and then uh, where'd you go to school? Went to, shoot, went to, uh, it was called Nichols, and then they were building uh, what became Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Elementary School. Um, we got to, like, we, we were we were far advanced because we went to one school for, I think, uh, like, kindergarten, no, through first grade. First, second, and third grade were in uh, Nichols, and then they moved us back to Lincoln because they had built this brand new school. And um and we had carpets like it was fly schools. Yeah. It was yeah it was a, and and looking back it, it was almost Montessori esque, only because it was there were walls but the but the doors on the doors didn't shut all the way they had these walls that they could pull closed, and yeah it was it was like I'm this is first time this memory's coming coming yeah. to me yeah. in years and I'm like oh wow we kind of we were a little more advanced than uh, some of the other schools I wish I had gone to a Montessori school anything yeah. close yeah. to it yeah Montessori is dope like my my, my uh, our daughters um, went went to Montessori and they um, yeah it was it was it was a dope experience for what grades your daughter um, yeah, no both both of them they um, they they were in it like I re here's what I loved about Montessori school um, compared to like myself was I remember being in school and these uh you know i remember my report cards and you probably you guys in entertainment too teachers always said on report cards dean has the ability to do better but spends too much time daydreaming uh -huh. right and i was like in my mind i was like well maybe you're just boring you know uh -huh. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how i looked at it because when i got in classes we had this one teacher mr hickey was dope but he kept he was engaging and he he helped you apply the um you you understood what he was teaching and how it applied to your life right and what did he my, teach mr hickey um, mr hickey back then it was everything they you know like we we he was our home homeroom teacher but he he did some of everything you know what i mean yeah. but he was engaging and yeah. he also let me like perform at the end of class at the what end of he, the day like what would you he know, say like at the end like he was dean. like dean yeah he was like dean you want to and then i'm i'm singing or doing whatever michael jackson whatever and was that a big one growing up? Michael, did you have a good Michael Jackson? Oh yeah, yeah, I loved MJ, man. Yeah, yeah, rock with you still reminds me of this girl. Uh, what was her name Tia? I think it was Tia or Mia. She had little green eyes, little pigtails on either side. Everybody liked her. Uh huh. You know, I liked her too. You know, <laughs> that's as far as it went. <laughs> but but still, I always wonder what those people like. You almost want to go back and see like if they became if they remained as precious yeah. as they were to you in third. Sure, grade, sure. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Every time I see my my middle school friend Kevin, we always like we always go through like where everyone is now. Yeah. Do you actually go online and do it or not? Sometimes, no? I mean, with Instagram, like you can like yeah, you, or you see their wedding pictures. You can and whatnot. pretty much middle school on. You can kind of know yeah, yeah, elementary yeah. school because I went I moved too. Okay. So I lost touch with some elementary people. Yeah. But you know, I and mean, the cool thing about being a stand up, like I go to D.C. and do Thanksgiving weekend where I grew up. 
And so I have like a bunch of middle school oh, teachers too. Teachers. And so they like come after out? the show, they come out. Oh, that's cool. And it's cool. this, it's really surreal. Oh, because like, I mean, it couldn't be better. They they are there to be nice to me. Well, especially because see them all. Yeah. You said you went to performing arts high school, yeah. Uh, an artistic high okay. school, okay. not fully performing arts. Okay. I tried, but like very artsy. Okay, but that that's great that these teachers that saw you when you were in art school now get to see you, and you're like, ta da, it worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's kind of. Yeah. And I had I had generally good teachers. I I my report cards were pretty. There, I remember our chorus teacher. I hated choir. Our Did choir you? was very boring. I mean, oh, okay. it was very like very religious songs okay. that was, mm-hmm. and was not like the see. fun religious songs. Right, right. And uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. And uh, <laughs> our t- our choir teacher got busted because someone there was a student who took choir for two days but then switched the band. Okay. And she ended up writing this person a full report card and a report. Where clearly she was just pulling it out of her ass. Uh, she was like, I believe the woman's name was Beth. She was like, Beth tries to focus, but I wish she would focus on this. And someone was like, she was not in this oh, class. Oh, wow. You are full of shit. Oh. But it's got to be tough as a choir teacher. You get 64 report cards. How are you going to yeah, write an yeah. individual paragraph yeah, yeah. for each person but from you memory? No, know <laughs> yeah. if they're there. You should have the attendance, though. <laughs> right. You know, like, yeah, that's but bare minimum. <laughs> Let's make sure that they were in the class. That's all, all really you have to do yeah. is make sure that all 64 kids are there. Jeez. Um, yeah, it really is the teacher, though, That now that you said that. Because yeah. I can think of, when I think of my favorite teachers, it generally didn't have to do that much with the subject. Right. It was it was really like, do I like this person, and are they like engaging They're and engaging. interesting? Um, I, I, well, maybe the exception is like, I really never connected, but maybe it was the teachers. I never connected with any sort of science or math. Sure. I, 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 no, I liked one of my math teachers. Well, I like two. Sorry, I forgot my name. I, I had my aunt. What did you like about you had your aunt as a math teacher? <laughs> yeah, but she knew she knows I don't I don't like math. Mm-hmm. So sure. it was kind of an ongoing thing. Like I was like, you know, I just because I knew at that point of math, when you get to that point in in, in high school, mm-hmm. I knew in my bones I didn't need anything. Was stuff. it like trigonometry? Proofs, when we're doing proofs uh-huh. on the board, okay, trying to prove things. Why are we proving this? It does feel. I feel like I there is an this. earlier time than the end of high school where you can start making a couple more decisions Do about your tax curriculum, stuff, yeah. tax stuff, or like transition oh, it, taxes. transition yeah. it. Ninth, tenth grade, fine, whatever math we're doing. Then the last year or two should just be like practical things that you'd be like uh, like insurance or tax stuff i don't know you well, know I, I think i think i think there would i think we would do better <clears throat> um society wise if we taught kid if we taught children more things that were more practical and, and applicable to their lives as opposed to because like you said there yeah. are things that they're never going to um address or utilize again yeah. such as like a trick like my in the on my second high school, second or third high school, um, me and the one of the teachers, first half of the year, I didn't like her. She didn't like me, and we were very blatant about it. And then by the end of the year, we was we were super tight. I don't even remember what what the click was, but I remember one of uh one of my friends at the school, um, he at the end of this uh at the end of the school year, he was like, "Wow, you two used to go at it when you first. And I think it was also probably me. Moving to another school and and just lashing out um, at someone that didn't seem like they were vibing with me and I wasn't vibing with them. And, and that became so I was like, I'm projecting. I was just yeah. projecting yeah. out on her. But we wound up. Uh, I think I think that was trigonometry, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I wound up doing if, if I liked you, I'd do well in your class because I also wanted you to like me and, and think I was I was, um, you know, doing I've always been a good student. Um, as far as, and that, that, that also, I used, I said, this will make me a great actor one day. Cause I'm a great listener. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so I was a good lead from, from like first and second grade on, I would follow the teacher around and just pan. Even if I zoned out my mind, <laughs> I'm not hearing anything yeah. you're saying, but I'm like, just keep looking at them wherever they go. Just wait and, you know, make sure you stay with them. Cause that'll, that'll, uh, that'll let them at least think that you are totally into whatever, <laughs> they're saying yeah and a lot of times i tapped out I don't yeah, know, yeah. I, don't, I don't care about any of this were you 
were you doing impressions at this young age? You said Michael Jackson, but were you like, did you did you know you had this mimicry skill? Yeah, because I always would um I would mimic cartoon king uh the Bugs Bunny uh you know yeah what's up Doc and uh and and I remember when I was a kid. Um, I've always been someone that liked watching credits and reading album uh, liner notes and uh-huh. seeing the people that are thanked and whatnot. Yeah, oh, yeah interesting. Yeah. And um, and I remember when I was when I was young, saying, "I think this dude um does all of the people's mail blank. I think he does all the voice because then because." It hit me. I said, uh, "Bugs Bunny's voice was 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 uh, was very similar to uh, to, 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 to to to." Um, I'm trying to think like uh, um, I'm trying to think of other characters like Tweety Bird, and they they all had they. I was and obviously as I got older, I was like, "Oh, when he's doing these voices, you can hear because they're they're sitting Porky Pig and and." They're all the same exact tone. It's just how how they uh, how how he conveys or what he does the nuances, right? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, su- suffering, suck a tag. You know, they, was that the same guy? The, I think all of those voices, all the same. Sylvester, Tweety, uh, uh, Bugs Bunny. Uh, um, I say, I say, a uh, fog fa- fa- horn, leg horn. You know, all of those people. All the same exact characters. So when I was a kid, I remember saying these. They all sound like the same. Like is I guess like when you hear a musician play something, and you're like, that's the same same yes. note. It's just on a different instrument, or it's the same interest. Or you're instrument like, this playing. sounds like a so and so song, and right? Like, right. Even though it's a different song. Yeah, it has but that's the amazing. You can hear that. Yeah. I don't think I could hear the relation between those different characters. Mm-hmm. But maybe you can hear. More, more finely. Well, you than, can hear, you can hear. It's, it's like hearing the 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 pitch between. I, I posted something on TikTok a couple months ago, and uh, it was like uh, like LL LL Cool J, right? LL is LL and Jay Z have the same, almost the same exact voice. Whereas, you know, LL is like real. He's he's choppy w- with the things he says, and and his words kind of drag out. But Jay Z has almost the same exact thing. He just he's he's saying it on the top of his throat, and he's not, and he's very scratchy with it. But if you Go back to LL. It's almost the same exact voice. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so that's that's what I was hearing back then. Hearing you do a good LL. <laughs> I, will not I, be I do. I do have a side. I do have a side quest about impressions. I'm curious about your your theory yeah. where it did feel like there was a time where when it came to uh, doing impressions of other races, mm-hmm. where where you know Jimmy Fallon was doing his Chris Rock. Mm-hmm. And other people were. Well, I was on SNL with him. Yeah, with with Jimmy yeah. Fallon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. At the time, what? How did you? Did you have any thoughts about it? Like, I I, I don't know. I don't my, know. My it, my changed. frustration was. Hey, I can do that, so why can't I do that? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty amazing to give Jimmy <laughs> Fallon Chris Rock over you. You know, but but I think when Jimmy did, I remember Jimmy did Chris beforehand. Maybe a season before me, but I remember seeing that. I was like, "Oh, okay." Because most most of the impressions, like when I when I uh, tested for SNL, I was like, "You know, you play to your strengths, right?" And so I was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm going to do voices that I know I can get cast as." Sure, right? Yeah. It just behooves you to to at least as 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 the other black dude on SNL with with Tracy Morgan, it just yeah. made sense for me. To do Denzel and do Don Cheadle and 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 do Chris Chris Tucker man and Chris, and Chris Rock you know or whomever yeah. or James or Jones you know do doing those people because I'm like okay I'm probably going to have a better chance yeah playing them if we do a sketch than than me doing John Lithgow if yeah. we do a John Lithgow sketch yeah. you know yeah yeah this is this it's just so you're playing <laughs> playing to uh to your strengths and sure and, and politically you're saying here let me let me do what's going to get me on air so, so what was G- your percentage of oh sorry go well, ahead. G- so Jimmy Jimmy at the time was doing Chris Rock for the show he had Chris I remember Daryl had um Daryl had, had um, what's he that? had Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson, yeah. And Were they doing it in blackface? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you have like like look when you were there at the mm-hmm. time? 
what was your thought when you saw that? Was there a, at the time, was it like, this is not good? This isn't going to look good in 10 years? Or was or it was like, whatever? Like, hey, I could do that. Like, that, was, that it was kind of, more of that. It, it was, was not more, like you were was, offended. It was more yeah, like, save the I'm, makeup. I'm annoyed. Like, Put the makeup you know, away. Yeah, it's yeah. Much I, remember, I remember one time specifically, I think I was, I, I want to say they wanted me to do a, a Colin Powell. And so I had worked on, they t- they, they called one of the producers, uh, Shu called me and said, um, they wanted me to do a Colin Powell, work on your Colin Powell. So I was working on it. Um, so Dean Obi Dollar, shout out to Toby Dollar, he was in research. He sent me a couple of, uh, you know, tapes um, of interviews, 60 minutes or whatever, of, uh, of Colin Powell and having to study his, and, and I haven't heard him in years, so I don't even know if I'm, I'm going off of memory. And, He's dead. No one's heard him. But, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Too soon. Yeah. Um, and then Friday when I got to rehearsal, being told that another cast member was going to, this is funny, that another cast member was going to be playing him. Well, it was Daryl, right? And it's not Daryl's fault. They they wanted him to do Colin Powell. But they were like, they're going to have you play an African delegate in that sketch. <laughs> hey, yo, I was, oh I ain't going to front. I was God. more annoyed because I was like, why'd y'all pump fake me? Why'd you make me think yeah. I was going to do, do this thing in the time cold working open? on it, you know? It is funny because, uh, I mean, I guess it's, I don't know what's worth Daryl Hammond playing Colin Powell or the African delegate. <laughs> but I guess if that's if no, these are the pieces you have to play else. with, yeah. and well, that's and that's the thing. While you're on the show, you really didn't have to, you you you're um, you're vying just to get on the air. And so in the midst of it, you like, I right, man, I just I I want to I want to get on the air this week. And so yeah, you didn't say there was there was no uh use pitching a bitch because it wasn't like what they weren't going to change it because I said nah y'all need to y'all need to make me Colin Powell you yeah. know how brilliant I am right yeah, now you yeah, know yeah. and so and so that that became frustrating sometimes well did at you, times did you yeah. feel like what 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 exactly was the year where we as a society were like I mean it's way later no, than you think it's, it's yeah like, it's way later it's like it, it's like 2014 where you know we mean? got like, to the point where like, Jimmy Fallon apologized mm-hmm. for doing Chris Rock yeah way back in the right. day and right. yeah. and even Chris Rock I felt like if I remember correctly Chris Rock released a statement that was like yeah it was fucked up like mm-hmm. he, Chris Rock didn't just go like oh, really? whatever but he did like he's like he was like yeah it was it's unfortunate well, that that was like well, cool. Well, well and I w- it there. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like we had no one else to do the it'd, impression. It'd be it's funny like, if Chris Rock was there and he's right. like, "Well, he's Jimmy's like, I Chris, could, I could be me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play me than you have this white boy play me." <laughs> but that that was um, I, I I wonder like hearing that I wonder if uh, if Rock was also probably if that was frustration from when he was on the show. Oh yeah, and. Things that he was like, I, I could do that. Why are y'all having, you know, yeah. Farley or whomever, right? Because oftentimes the show would play based on whoever was hot. And obviously Daryl was, was uh, especially in season two, it was during my season two, Will Farrell's off the show, Anna Gosteyer's off the show. So they want to make sure that people, um, you know, recognize the cast members. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, but if y'all ain't using me, people ain't going to recognize me. You yeah. Know? yeah. And so that that was the frustration. And I can imagine Chris having been there is probably annoyed with it, too, because he's looking like, shoot, have have Tracy, have Tracy play uh, me after a bunch of bee stings, whatever, you yeah. know. Yeah, but yeah. Like, it is it is weird for a show that covers all the things it does is that it always feels like it has like we got one. They've gotten better, better that we, we yeah. rely I think that's on. That's a problem with the. You know? Well, I I think it's I think it's challenging only in that like. In theory, if you're going to be able to t- do sketches about a lot of different things, mm-hmm. you might have a sketch where you need five Asian people, and mm-hmm. it's like, the, the, does the cast have to get bigger? But like back in the day, people uh, they pretended to be things that they weren't, and then we decided, you know, this is a little fucked up. But it also limits the sketches. Like right now, SNL has a lot of black cast members, yeah. and it's opened up the world yeah. of like sketches that could not have been done before. Right, yeah. and that's that. That's and and honestly, I'm you know I'm happy for the cast that are on there. Um, However, part of me is like, damn, I wish, I wish yeah, you're th- we were able to do some of those things back when I was on the show. Like, I remember, uh, you know, there were times when 
I was like, wait, the, the, Bernie Mac's the host and Tracy and I are only each in one sketch when you yeah. go to air. I'm like, y'all need to figure this out yeah. because you, you have a lot of talent on the show. You don't have every sketch. This, no one ever complains that you have five white guys in a sketch. So no one's going to trip if you see three black people and one of them's the guest host. If you see Bernie and Dean and Tracy in the same sketch and, and Maya, you oh, know, yeah. in the same yeah, sketch. Yeah, like, yeah. like, and so that's, that's, um, you know, the, the, the idea of the, the, the black face and, and just the, the racially insensitive, that's something we've always been aware of, you know, as for any, anyone of color that was either on that show or just in the, like using SNL as a, as, as a, uh, microcosm of, uh, Hollywood and society in general, these are issues that have been, persistent for years right and and we've always been aware like so yeah i don't think this is weird that there can only like uh, black st stand-up comics becoming uh superstar actors right yeah for years it was this i called it the highlander uh syndrome where there could only be one uh -huh. there could only be one hot black comic so when when uh richard came um uh, or when 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 Eddie came, Richard Pryor, um, you know, felt insecure because Eddie was there. And I remember Eddie saying, "Hey, man, if I get an A, you get an A on the test. We both got A's. My A didn't cancel out your A." Yeah. And so so then fast forward a couple of years, and then Damon Wayans is the hot dude. And then all right, well we we gotta wait. We can't let Damon Wayans and Chris Rock and Robert Townsend. Okay. And then fast forward another couple of years. Okay, Chris Tucker's the go to dude. Okay, but you know, Chris Rock, you're a stand up. You're really not a, a, a big uh, film star. Okay, now Kev Hart. Now, you know, so they, they've, yeah. over time, you're seeing more representation, which yeah. is good. Um, you're, seeing, you're seeing more than the same, you know, five or ten, uh, you know, actors uh, of color, male and female, that are getting opportunities. I, I, love, I love going to the movie. My wife and I actually comment on it when we're watching something. We're watching uh, something on Hulu recently, and a friend of mine, Nefertari Spencer, she's on. It's called Reasonable Doubt, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I said to my wife, uh, or we said to each other, I said, you know what? It's nice to see some new black faces um, on a TV show. Yeah. And you're not seeing, and that's no disrespect taken away from the 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 10 or 20 actors that that always were getting used because holly was like oh well, here let's use uh this person or that person yeah it's like there are other actors yeah. <laughs> that, that are available for these roles you yeah. just have to um take a chance and and hire more actors you yeah. know yeah that are that are talented and and qualified to present themselves I, my biggest i think one of my biggest qualms about snl in general is just the fact that it is so important and there's not other mm -hmm. there's not a lot of avenues for like sketch comedians or impressionists right, right. like impressionists there yeah. is a, there is a limited fucking pool Damn. of like and there there were other shows that have tried how well, long like was in living color how long did in living, living color, color run? did i want to say four or five seasons yeah, yeah. If i think the first two or three um were the two, the first two were super strong the third i think was was still decent cuz there were still wayne's involved yeah uh, season 4 i think there were fewer wayne's maybe just keenan and and like Sean and marlon and then season 5 it Kenan. was just uh -huh. Keenan Ke Ke Ivory, Ivory Wayans. Keenan Ivory Wayans. Oh, not oh got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is he He's a vampire? Yeah, on every sketch show. God of all damn, Keenan. <laughs> Keenan no, had the most, like, I mean, I grew up watching Keenan on right, all that. Right, and right, then yeah. Keenan and Cal. Yeah, and yeah. then Good Burger. Yeah. And then, but I yeah, mean, yeah. what a with, career. With sketches, it's like SNL. Because then everything else is kind of like you have to have been someone kind of known mm -hmm. to yeah. start your own sketch show basically yeah. is what it feels like now yeah, yeah outside yeah. of snl sure. yeah. you know yeah, like from from well think about all the shows they used like from Chappelle, mm -hmm. and then everything else that they filled in the blanks trying to capture that same Chappelle yeah. energy carlos mencia had a sketch or he won the sketch performer but someone was like here let's just go with yeah. the the latino uh comic and then i think dimitri had one had a had a sort of sketch it's show dimitri martin how into carlos mencia show I was at that age. Really? I was really into wow. it. I was there and I'm going sure, like, and I'm sure it was funny. I'm so this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the punchline for um, half the goddamn I had a show. question about uh, when you came into SNL. 
Um, I How old like, were you? Yeah. How old was I when yeah. I got it? Uh, that was the summer I turned 31. 31? Younger than you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so my question is... Uh, it feels like, as two people who are not on SNL, it feels like you, if you don't know people there mm. when you're going in, mm-hmm. it feels like it would be an incredibly daunting place because there's no incentive for the writers to write for a new person right. if they don't know you. And also, they're trying to get their sketches on, so they're probably going to write for the people that are established. That's or, Did you know people going into it, or were you kind of on your own? Yeah, no. I was, a, any stand-up coming onto the show, yeah, at that least too, at the time... Already, yeah. At least at the time, um, and that might have changed. Like I know, say, like Rosebud is a writer on the show, yeah. And her and I think her name is Punky, yeah, uh, Punky, Punky, yeah. Her and Punky are real cool, and they. I, I was watching them at the cellar one night. I was like, oh yeah, y'all, y'all. If you, as long as y'all have each other, you're fine. Yeah. Because if you have at least one person and y'all yeah. click. Um, beyond the show, right? Like even beyond the show, you have like a friend for life, and you have someone that you're confident. Um. Starting on the show, I knew Tracy, but Tracy was a stand-up. And, had he been and, there? How huh? long had he been there before you? Tracy, Tracy had been there five years already. So he was like, yeah. was he? It was established. Was he, in his, like, he was established. He was established, but I honestly think Tracy really popped in his last two seasons. That just happened to be also when I was there, having not having nothing to do with me being there. But I think he really like. Um, his fourth season, he started finding his rhythm. By season five, by I'm sorry, by season. Five, he found his rhythm in his six and seven seasons. I think he really popped. Were you the same class of stand-up comics, or was he ahead of you? No, no, we we. I think we all started around ninety-two. We all started. Seeing around Tracy, like seeing his like deaf comedy jam, it's it's wild because it's <laughs> alt. It's alt in a space where like alt comedy isn't as common. Like yeah. like he's there with a fucking yeah, twirly with pro- hat, with a propeller hat, and like I just could see. S- him getting booed in a different, you know, I mm-hmm. I don't see that act flying at like the Apollo. He killed at the Apollo. Did though. he really? Killed at the Apollo. I'll do you one. But Tracy came out of. Um, it's actually a great story. Tracy Morgan, um, like started at Uptown Comedy Club. Now before Def Comedy Jam, uh, Uptown Comedy Club is a spot up in Harlem. That uh, you know, birthed some some great comics. Jim Brewer. They they actually had really? a sketch show called the Uptown Comedy Club. Oh. Um, and when Def Comedy Jam premiered, Uptown Comedy Club was on the air. It was syndicated, and Brewer, Brewer Jim Brewer, Tracy Morgan, um, Deborah Wilson, who wound up on Mad TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my, excuse me, I'm sorry. My boy Maceo, brilliant, uh, funny comic. Uh, uh, uh Rhonda Fowler, Flex Alexander, who who is uh he 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 was on like Homeboys in Outer Space and he's had a couple of other half and half a couple of other shows yeah um and uh and Tracy and I think Tracy wound up stumbling into Tracy's had a very like fortunate career like the Angels been looking out for him because he stumbled onto and not the whole onto time, the stage yeah yeah you're right right <laughs> um and he uh and he wound up. On Uptown Comedy Club, which then led to him doing the spot on Def Comedy Jam, which then led to Martin Lawrence putting him on his show, uh, Martin, playing Hustle Man uh, for a couple of seasons. Really? And then he wound up getting SNL. He, I mean, Tracy, ha- Tracy has like, has the, you want to hear like the the all of the, the, the story of, of Americana and someone just winning against the odds. It's sure. just Tracy, Tracy Morgan's story, man. Yeah. He's just, I think he's just, he bleeds funny. I mean, he's yeah. so, like, yeah. that's why his impression is so funny because like, he just talks yeah. Yeah. funnily. Yeah. And, and that's, but that's to me that's those are the best comics you know i think now you know you and i both know comics and you're like i i wouldn't look at them and think they're funny but i know they're funny because i've seen them on stage but yeah. off stage you're like nothing about this person <laughs> sure reads humorous yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah no, i know exactly what you mean yeah well because uh, <laughs> because some some cats are better writers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some cats are better performers. Um, Tracy, I can sit in. I'll just sit and like, just laugh, just chopping it up with Tracy, just standing in the cipher outside of outside of a comedy club. Yeah, just because you know, he, once he finds one thing funny, he's going he's going to stay on it. You know what I mean, John Marco? Yeah, you know, yeah. even how he says John Marco, you know. The, I heard <laughs> yeah. the story. Uh, you know, JP, uh, uh, Jamique. No, it's it's JP. Fuck, I forget. McDade. No, not McDade. Oh. JP. 
Uh, used he, to book. Um, um, he 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 told me doing Catch a Rising Star. Uh, I, sometimes you don't know how to see a big guy. Mm-hmm. It's a big dude. And uh, I should now. I said it. Yeah, black. Black. That has to be. It, it's probably Jameek. J P Justice. J P Justice. Yeah, J- yeah, yeah. Jameek. Jameek. Is that what he, his is name? Is, his real name is Jameek oh. Striker. Jameek uh. has the dopest name on the planet. Like if your name is Jameek Striker. That's the name you go by. You don't change it to JP. JP. Look, I, I didn't know if you were talking about the guy that used to book Conan or... or the, oh, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. J- Jameek, what is it? J- Jameek. I call him Jameek because that's what I met him as. Yeah. Like, anybody, like I'm not calling Bill, Billy Burr Bill. Sure, right? sure. Because how I met you, his mama, mama called him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay, right? Like, yeah. the people that wouldn't call Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, they were like, you're Cassius. I knew you were this big. And so I knew Jameek when he was Jameek before JP. <laughs> I knew Billy when he was Billy, not Bill, and mature sounding, you know. Um, I'm going to, so my name is Dardinian. No, I'm just, it's just Dean. He told me a story where he, at, he first time he did at Catch a Rising Star, mm-hmm. and he, like, bombed in front of a sold-out room. And he went back in the green room. And he said, Tracy Morgan was like, don't get that bomb on me. And he went in the alleyway and cried and cried and cried. And uh, uh, there was this degree of like, there was a degree where I'm like, with comedy, sometimes I'm like that harshness or that like, dude, you bombed. Like a real like, you bombed. Yeah, yeah. That is is, uh, more like in the vein of the Apollo and Uh more with like black rooms where I'm like, we need some of that energy yeah, yeah. in in these other worlds because yes. it makes you strong, but it can be mean, and it can, it's hard to know. But I like I I I admire that, and I'm like, for me, mm-hmm. I feel very fortunate if I if 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 I'm a, a okay comedian. It's partly because mm-hmm. I worked at LOL, which yeah. in a way is one of in a way is a, a black comedy club, right, right, right. at least in the performers, right. and I'm like. I had where if I was bombing on stage, Ken Boyd, do you know Ken Boyd? Uh, he would just say, he would say, uh, boo, N-word, to me while I was on stage. And I'm like, boo, that nigga. made me stronger right, right, as right, a comic. Right. And that, well, that's that's the difference between, and it's, it's, and it's nice hearing a, a comic that came up in a different era appreciate that. Because I, I agree that the, the clubs now, <clears throat> seeing the clubs, really nationwide, but... Um, Especially in New York, there was an edge. I remember uh, I was talking to Burr, maybe might have been during the pandemic, like towards the the latter part of the pandemic when we were first starting to get out. And I think uh, yeah, it was like last February did his podcast, and, uh-huh. we, and we were talking about coming up in the rooms, right? And and the, and the rooms being the one nighters, not not the clubs that are dedicated to comedy, but. You know, hole in the wall sports bars in in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, uh, Staten Island, Jersey, Connecticut. You had you had probably at its peak back in the nineties. There were probably a good 50, 50 plus spots that you could go. It that's sounds what, that's, so nice. That's what helped me quit my day job, right? Because yeah. you could go and get like a nice little you know buck, you know, hundred dollars. Um, doing one of those spots and you're like, well, if I'm making a couple hundred dollars telemarketing, I'll just do this and get like three or four of those a week and yeah. then some road gigs. And um, Burr was even, he was, there, there were, there were guys that you admired the, and we always admired the, the white guys that would come, come from the comfort of, Boston Comedy Club in the Village, or 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 the Comedy Cellar, or Ca- Caroline's, or the Comic Strip, or Stand Up New York, and would come do these rooms because they wanted to get better, right? And so yeah. you had DC Benny, you had Burr, mm-hmm. you had Dan Natterman, um, ah, ah, you had ah, geez, I can't, Russ Maneve, you know, there were a handful of guys that were like not, nah, but that and and they weren't pandering, right? They, sure, it wasn't, sure. Because because obviously there's the there's the pander where you're the white guy that's in this all black or Latino room, you're like, and they play, you know, uh, all about the Benjamins, like, oh yeah, that's my song, but and you're like, oh, stop dancing, this is awkward, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. um. But that they, they the same jokes that they would do at the clubs in the city they were doing in the outer boroughs and yeah, that's yeah, and yeah. that's what made them stronger and so when you had you know the the hazing uh, of that that uh, that Geraldo or Patrice or or Keith Robinson or Norton would would you know give 
um, anyone, you know, it was it was also justified because we're like, no, you stink. You yeah. know, you, you, you stink and you, you, you bond like that. That's that's what made Kev, Kevin Hart a stronger comic, right? Was there because, was the Patrice because they were documentary where they said Patrice, Patrice would throw a phone book at him on stage yeah. and say, find someone in there who says you're funny. <laughs> like, just brutal <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. And I think Patrice would have, like, if I if I had been in that era, Patrice would have made me cry. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I hear those yeah, stories yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, he'd like, see me and he'd know I'm easy to destroy. <laughs> yeah. And he would do it. <laughs> How would you define? Because I feel like I I certainly like like as a as a comic who like has worked. First of all, there's there's I always think there's this thing of like some people call it urban rooms, which sometimes I'm like, okay, it's called a black room at least in the comedy yeah. circles. But it feels it's one of these things where it's like you feel nervous to talk about it outside of like a comic space. Right, I feel you. I but feel how you. would you define? like the difference between working what would be considered a black room like what's what's about what about the black comedy? room versus the mainstream room like what yeah what's what's how would you define the difference the 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 main difference is less ex, less exposition and quicker to the funny right yeah 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 where if if uh, i'm thinking of like the the one of the harshest rooms um well, there was like the peppermint uh peppermint lounge out in jersey that's where bob sumner used to um, you had to, if you were doing Def Comedy Jam, you had to go there before you did Def Jam. That was like the proving ground. Yeah. And so it's like, I think I did, I've done it five times in my life. I think I did real well twice. I think I did okay one time. And then uh, one time or the other two times, it was like, <laughs> you're like, it was rough. It was rough. You know what I mean? But I'm, a, you know, they're legends that, that did that room yeah. and caught L's, you know? Um, so yeah, I think the different mainstream crowd, mainstream comedy club, uh, people have paid money to see a comedy show. They know they're paying money to go see a comedy show. Um, so they are in a, they're in a stand up comedy mind state, right? And they're ready to laugh and they're going to support. And even if they don't, if, even if they don't laugh, they're surrounded by other people laughing. So like, oh, he's giving, okay. All right. I see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, in a in a in a black room or urban, um, you might be in a, a a bar that someone was coming to watch the Knicks play, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you're, you're watching the Knicks and it's and it's during the playoffs and the Knicks are in the playoffs. You're like, oh my Knicks are in the playoffs, and now um, right at the uh, end of uh, the third quarter, they're up by ten and suddenly the TV's off. You're like, yo, what are you doing? They're like, no, the comedy show is good. Comedy show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, for no comedy, them comics, you know what I mean? So now you have to, now you have to contend with someone that didn't even know they were coming to a comedy show, right? Um, I, I used to, at, there was a point where I used to say sometimes you, you'd call it combat comedy because you had to like feel like you were putting on this Kevlar and, and, and your armor because if you don't get to that joke, in in a, in a quick fashion, yeah, they're gonna let you know. But the difference being, if you win people over quickly, Ooh, heaven. it's heaven because black people, Latino people, um, that are going into those clubs, they're not just <laughs> they're like, oh, oh, you know, they hopping out yeah, of their seats. I forget the comic has said like they'll yeah. change locations. Yeah, yeah, the lab. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, they relocate, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's I've I've my always have had a personal theory, and I used to do Harlem nights a lot. Okay, I, I used to live in Harlem. Okay, and I always felt like there was a degree where uh, I don't know if this is Brooklyn or Jewish, where self deprecation. Mm -hmm didn't work as well i always felt like if i had a joke about having a small penis or whatever okay. like in brooklyn like it would work and if i was at harlem nights i'd get a feeling of of the guys being like dude there's women here what are you doing oh, like there wasn't as much i didn't feel there was as much i did this i did the serious xm show with the uh, earthquake show when oh, i was quake, in la yeah. and it was funny because there was my man oh man, oh, man. john marco you a good dude i he was <laughs> I, I he's like you know he's a legend in my mind so it's just like i was yeah. in awe Right, because you're from D.C. also, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that's Quake's house, yeah. And and I just remember there was a guy next to me, and I think Earthquake referred to him as, like, the alpha dog of comedy. And uh -huh. I made a joke okay, where he did, and got to me, and I was like, I'm the beta dog of comedy. And it felt like the room was like, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> like, not a, not a moment, not even a just, like, <laughs> it was just like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you say that? And I, I was, it was that moment where I swear it was like that moment where, like, I, I, 
where there's a degree of like confidence. Like you uh, have to lead yeah. with some kind of confidence. Well, and when yeah. I go, I mean, I just think about the the classic Bernie Mac. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Scared for the muckers. Yeah. And and it was. It's like for me, that's that captures the spirit of like how you really crush because yeah. confidence is more important where i feel like you go to brooklyn and be like you go to brooklyn and be like i'm very scared of you motherfuckers uh, uh, and it's like that's respected uh, there yeah. yeah that's interesting yeah. i never i never whether re regardless of where i was i always do i had to come out strong i had to come yeah. out strong i had to finish strong um and i had to at least maintain funny during the 10 or 15 minutes while i was up there because i mean i was following i mean you anyone from talent to leslie jones to yeah. to jb smooth who is the hardest yeah. follow mm. who's the one that you go fuck i'm following yeah in the in the in the black rooms talent was always hosting so that made it a little easier because sure. talent, talent was like talent talent was beast um Leslie was challenging because I don't I don't really use profanity and Leslie was going all out. But then that made me stronger because that made me also realize, oh, if you're if you play smart, you know, you can you can um, you can minimize what happened before you if you know how to piggyback off their wave so that sure. so so that instead of getting uh drowned by their wave of of of, of energy you just can ride that their wave of energy into what you do yeah Le leslie was was always beast freddie ricks um jameek jb jp was was or uh, is a strong cat um who is uh, jb smooth man jb you didn't want to follow because jb smooth jb smooth what he would do jb would take whatever his premise was and he would milk it and he would keep running back over whatever was funny and the crowd is crowd is like exhausted and, and yeah. like you know and laughter you know people don't realize laughter is tiring because yeah. it's an ab workout yeah 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 and jb would jb was somebody shoot tracy on tracy would i mean it was there was so many beasts that were coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, it, yeah, it's man. a lot of beasts. And then like and Todd Lynn, Todd man, Todd, rest in peace, Todd Lynn, um, used to put put like bring that fire, you know. Um, Patrice, you know, um, Patrice wasn't really doing those rooms, but Patrice in in all the clubs in the city, you're like, I I remember watching. Um, Patrice had the he opened for Jimmy Walker, or featured for Jimmy Walker at really? Carolines. That was rough. That was rough to watch because for you, who for Jimmy or for for Jimmy yeah, Jimmy yeah, yeah. Jimmy because you, you, yeah. you know Patrice you know Patrice is uh, uh ugh. you know he was doing what he does and then Jimmy Walker is from a different era so he was funny but it was a different cadence a different pace yeah and so Jimmy Walker coming out doing the Jimmy Walker thing. It, it just it, after Patrice it, just after like Patrice fucking just talked about eviscerated. the real yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, man. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was. But those, but those, those stories. You know, you cherish those memories because you're happy that you were around them. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, I did want to ask about you served. Yeah, yeah. I was in the army uh, six years. After what served. age did you join? I joined at uh, to age twenty. I joined when I was twenty. I needed needed some. Uh, I was always I got offended that all of my friends uh, that came from single parent households were getting all types of financial aid, and because I had two parents. Um, the 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 you know higher education was like oh you have money like well, that money ain't sitting in a surplus you know yeah and, and yeah. so I just uh, a couple of my buddies I was working with at Kmart at the time they were in the army they were in the reserves and and they made they were great advertisements. Like they did more than the, we do more before twelve p.m. I was or before nine a.m. than most people. I didn't care about that, but but Mikey and Scoot, you know, they are always fresh and they always had money. And like, oh, dude, you got me. You got to join Army. Army, you you gonna get a check? I got a new car, and I was like, word, you know. And I just I I I was like, I told my parents, I was like, you know, save your money. For for my for my sister save save her money for her so she because I'm not I'm not a great student anyway I'm still in college figuring at out. this point at I was 20? in college You're I was in college, college. Okay. I was in college um and I was still sort of figure I knew this is what I wanted to do didn't know exactly how to get to that 
Um, and, and I was like, just the idea of having these student loans, um, just bugged me. And yeah. I was like, you know what? They said the GI bill would pay for it, pay it, whatever. I was like, all right, shoot, I'll join the army. Um, go, you, you, you know, and where'd you so go? I did, where'd you station um, I was, I, I did basic at, uh, cause I was reserved, so it wasn't as bad. I did boot camp at, um, Fort Jackson, Columbia, South Carolina. How hard is this boot camp? Um, boot camp is, is, were you is, in good shape? Were you like, I wound up in great shape. Yeah. <laughs> no one's in, anyone that thinks they're in good shape, isn't in good shape until they get there. And you go through, because I mean, you're, you're, you're. Number one, you're working out every morning. You're waking up at like zero, zero, uh, 500 hours to go. Look, <laughs> but you're outside in, in, in shorts and in a, a shirt at, at 530, 0530. Um, workout, you're doing two miles of running. You're doing push ups and sit ups. Uh, and then you have to. How long is this workout? I like 45 to an hour. Then okay. we, we would, we would, uh, we get back to the barracks, have to have to shower, put on our BDUs, um, be, be in a formation for chow line by like 6.45, get get in there by 7. Good food? Um, food was actually really good, man. That's nice. I enjoyed the food. The food, um, I enjoyed eating. I enjoyed eating. But, and, and then, you know, throughout your day, you're walking around with a, you know, 70-pound rucksack on your back along with an M16 assault rifle. Um, so you're walking around huh? a class or like uh, what? You, you, um, whatever class you had, yeah. But also like you're doing marches with 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 this rucksack where you know you you you're doing you know five ten miles with with eighty pounds in your back. You 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 can't help but get in shape. Was there a work? Or, you said reserves. That means that you're just so training res, just so, in case. So reserves is is essentially um, for me. I did what's called split options. So um, since I was in college when I um, when I joined. I could. I went away for the. That's how I planned it. I went away for the summer, did boot camp, came back. Um, when I after the the say ten weeks or so, um, I get back. First newspaper I read says Operation Desert Shield is now Desert Storm. We're at war. I'm like you. <laughs> wow. You, I, yeah. I, I just wanted some money for books, dude. <laughs> um, and they. So the next thing I know, they uh, they activated half of our unit, and fortunately, right before. They um right before the rest of us got activated, the war stopped because I had done like a power of attorney and my will and all of that. Um, so uh, half the people you were with got yeah, half, went half the people storm. in my in my unit um up in Webster, New was York, that like a draft kind of thing or people it, opted well, you know in? What? Or? No, they they actually have found out that they they activated people that hadn't been showing up for drill. So they <laughs> well, I think that I, I, I gotta say yeah, I feel like. People who had been showing up right more prepared would have been more war. prepared. That's what we always do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. Let's go. You know, I don't know. Right. Wow. But yeah, we uh, and then I went to school, and then the following summer I went and did my um advanced individual training AIT out in uh Fort uh Sam Houston out in uh. Did part oh, of yeah. you ever want to serve just to be like to make these push-ups count for something? Um, part of well, you they, did. They are if they, he's, he's getting yeah, money. He's yeah, getting, you we know. were serving, but I you did I did I want to go to war? Yeah, I mean, obviously, maybe you don't want, but like, there's part of you like you're getting in shape, and you're like, do you want to help with something, yeah, or you're just like, like thank I, God. I, honestly, at the time, I was like, I was, I was gonna be, I was going to be more annoyed that had I been taken out um, and activated in say um, November, December, I would have had to repeat that whole semester of work so that's uh -huh. that's where my mind was. i was i was uh -oh. like i was ready to be pissed off because i was like they're about to activate and i gotta do all yeah. this damn studying the guy y'all yeah, yeah. have seen through this i wasn't the best student um and uh but yeah fortunately they and, and a bunch of my buddies um got active one of my one of my best men in my wedding he got active my boy general uh jerome jackson got got activated and uh and fortunately you know he came back i remember he told me one time they were they were in they were uh you know over in um uh, was it i don't even remember where where in the middle east they were um but he's over there they're watching a tv so that like say the tv's here and then there's an opening and they saw something explode and they saw it on their tv yeah. he was like and he told me he was like dude that's how real it was it was that close to us i was like oh wow i said i'm glad i was in uh you know film class or whatever <laughs> you know how do you because you're a veteran mm -hmm. how do you relate to veterans who served do does it ever feel like the, the ones who went over there mm -hmm. do, does it feel like they 
do they see you as a veteran? Do they see you as a uh, like like there's does it feel like any do you, do you feel connected or disconnected? Oh, yeah, no, I um I feel connected because we all went through the same training. We all went through the same training. It's it's like, you know, once you've gone through that and anyone I've known, obviously I'm sure, you know, you'd have to ask one of, you'd have to ask anyone that's actually been activated and yeah. during, and sent to war. Um and because then there's something else that they share that they've they've had that experience. You know, it's like anything that you you've been, you know, uh forced to be amongst others you share an experience and you can never take away from that. Right. Yeah. And so, so, uh, like my boy general general, he has, he has a couple of friends that are now my friends, but I also know they have a special bond because they all were active over in the middle East serving, you know, um, our country. Whereas I didn't have that experience. So I'm cool with them. I'm cool with like a bunch of cats. Actually, they, when we got active, when they got activated, they sent our unit down and got deployed with a unit from DC. So most of, most of his closest friends from the military are from the DC area. My boy, Tam, my boy, uh, Butler, you know, my boy, Rodney Smith and, and, and a bunch of them, they all got activated from that unit. And so, Part of me, part of me wishes that I had that connection with them. Yeah. But I also, they also, there's never been, no one's ever looked down on me, at least to my face. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Where they're like, oh, you ain't real, you ain't real on me because you ain't, you, you ain't serve war. I'm like, hey, dog, like, I, and I've done a lot of military tours, both Air Force, Army, Marine, yeah. you know, bases and uh, in, in, in the Middle East, as a matter of fact. And there's always, there's always a sort of camaraderie because people know that we've all gone through the same exact training. We've yeah. all had to learn how to function check uh, an M16 assault rifle and take it apart and put it back together. Sure. You know? Do you have a good chunk on that? A good stand-up chunk only for I, um, those tours? I, really for those tours. You know, like, like then it all comes back and then there are things that they're going to get that the late person probably wouldn't If I did those tours, to. I certainly, like, I don't know what, that audience is at all like right. i would it would be a lot of like i'd have to think or i'd, I'd ask right. you or someone right. like right. i've never done those tours but you'd be amazed i i just had a conversation with someone because uh someone asked me uh reese I, I, I was in uh i was at this casino in uh pennsylvania you've done parks yet have you done this casino parks? no i haven't done parks so i did parks casino and i was talking to one of the guys a musician down there he was like he was like wait so so you've 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 gone overseas. Where is and so he asked me where comedy's taking me. I said, man, I've I've done shows from uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town in South Africa to yeah. Alexandria and Cairo in Egypt um, to Riyadh and Jeddah in Saudi to to uh, Amman, Jordan and and Doha, Qatar and and Dubai and and China and and Chengdu and 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 Hangzhou in China. And I said. I don't change my act for any of these places. And like, yeah, but you don't, I said, listen, man, people are the same wherever you go. All right. You know, people that's, that's, we, 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 we get it so twisted here in the States, I think, because, um, and I, I and there's a good amount of propaganda to, to, sure. to paint, you know, certain regions and certain areas into a different, uh, you know, um, image than what they actually are. Some of the best treatment I've ever had um, as an entertainer um, have been in the Middle East. Not for not for military tours either, for local promoters um, and have gotten wonderful responses. One of one of uh, the first international tours I did was myself, Sebastian Maniscalco, wow. and Angelo Sarukas. I'll show you this picture um, later. And um, and we had a blast over there in front of like three thousand, I'm gonna say fifteen hundred to three thousand um, Saudis. You know, and and there were expats mixed in as well, but wow. it was mainly Saudis. Was Sebastian and, doing his Chipotle bit still? Huh, not yet. No, this is this is oh <laughs> nine. I don't even know wow. if he had, had yeah. written that one yet. But you know, we no, none of us were like, geez, what are they? Huh? Do they understand? Everybody speaks English. You know, I joke yeah. about it on stage. We're the lazy ones that tap out at sure. one yes. language, yes. right? Yes. But everywhere else, they 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 speak multiple languages. And this right here, the phone and the internet have made the world a lot smaller. So anything that happens here in New York, 
They know about overseas in a couple of minutes. And so they can relate. They can relate to to Mr. West losing his mind and they can, they yeah. can, you, so you can, if I'm, if I'm doing a joke, I, I wouldn't do a joke cause it's hack. Not, nah, but if I'm doing that joke over here, I can go overseas and talk about it. Cause they're looking like, uh, Habibi, why is he so crazy? You know, they're looking yeah. too, mm-hmm. you know? So, it, so that's, that's the beauty of, of traveling internationally. And similar to what you just said, I think comics do need to, move outside of their comfort zone sure. right so you you doing lol obviously is a different energy than you performing at the cellar or the village underground but ultimately you're, you're you're doing the same joke you're just maybe if anything you might change your pacing sure because you have a little more time to to expand and 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 expose what you're talking about but it's it's still it's still the same jokes man yeah, I think, like, when I went to Canada, like, I did a chunk about Harlem. And, you know, it's like I've learned from LOL mm-hmm. how to sum up what I need them to know about Harlem right, right. in two lines right. and then go from there. Right, yeah. right. You economize. That's that's what that's really, like, the best stand-up is all, all about yeah. economizing and getting to your joke and not pontificating about how heavy a deep thinker you are. Like, let's be funny. Just <laughs> yeah, get to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, do you have a corner? Yeah, I can do it. I, I have a prompt. Uh, uh, let me just put this. I wait. Hold up. Uh, uh, let me just. Oh, let me ask while I find this. Why fix this cue real quick? Are there any impressions that you never could nail down that you were like, God damn it, that you couldn't figure out? Because for me, it's all of them. Like in my head, I can hear what Trump right. sounds like, right. and I literally right. cannot do it with my right. What's your your Trump? I can't do Trump. China. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's your word. <laughs> that's all I got. Just that one. That one word. Yeah, I've never um anyone I do I do them because I like them and think they're interesting. Like yeah. if you know, if if I hear a voice and I like hey, hearing Erica Badu the first time I heard her, I was I, I'm singing with her, I'm harmonizing with her. So then doing an impression of her that with her actually I remember she was a uh, Donnell Rawlins used to host his room. Um, Brooklyn Moon Cafe it was also a poetry spot in uh, in Brooklyn. And one night I was doing this joke about her <laughs> and doing an impression of her. And then I said, I said, I said, Eric, is that you? She was like, and she nodded. I was like, oh, you know, so I, I did the joke a yeah. little bit longer, add a little bit more funk to it. And um, nah, because I think I can, if I hear it, I know I can do it. And if I, if I don't think it's someone that's interesting to me or someone that I'm really pressed to do, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to attempt it. Yeah. You know? Um, all right, this is our this is our new segment. I we got the ding 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 ding
in my mm. shower. You and your girlfriend that just went kayaking, just come shower in my no. Yeah. You know, I think yeah, that's a good one. These are these are tough. I I I'm doing that thing where I'm like, fuck, I don't have a good one. But I yeah. I've I have you one get of my in fights in your head all the time. I know you do. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm getting better at like I'm getting better at like doing it now. Yeah, okay. okay to, or good. Tova does it for me now. Tova, yeah. and I'm like, Tova, <laughs> oh, Tova, Tova, please. Oh, that's the beauty of having having a significant <laughs> other that they can play bad guy. Sure, but yeah. I think like Tova, it's just one of those things. I've tried to figure out a bit about it because it's like Tova will will get mad at someone, and I'm like, oh, if they hit anyone, it's gonna be me. Right. Like I am your yes, right. <laughs> yes. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she, you're her avatar. Yes, that yes. was the word I was trying to think yes. of. Yeah, yes. It's, yes. It's, it's it's that. Um, uh, let's see. I think uh, sometimes some someone has made me feel shame. It's gonna be something in there. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, I think there was, it's very complicated, but I got in trouble at school at some point. Theater department, there was a big, people got drunk and high the mm. closing night of the show. It was common. Everyone knew it. And then at some point, they tried to catch everyone. Oh. Uh, uh, they tried to, like, get everyone to, and we didn't understand. There's one of these things where I didn't understand I could lie. Uh, uh, and, like, no one, th- these are not cops investigating right, me. Just right, lie. Right. And I remember we were at this big meeting, and... They were trying to like make us all crack, and it, mm-hmm. surely enough, it worked. Like mm-hmm. they went around, they're like, "Guys, we need you to be honest about it." And everyone was lying. And then one girl was like, "I did take a bite of the pot brownie." And then this woman cried, and then this guy cried, and everyone cried. Yeah. And and I, in my head, I was like, "I'm not good, good. I'm not." And then like the tech guy, he looked at me and he he mouthed, "We know you did it." Oh damn! Oh! <laughs> wow! And like it like shook me, and I wow. wish I'd gone up to him after, and I had said like. You motherfucker, you knew everyone got drunk and high. You're just doing this because your job is on the line. How dare you try to fuck up my future because you got busted. And that's the one I really wish I said, fuck Fuck you. you. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He sucks. Good, I like that one. Yeah, that's good. Russell Sandbox. And look, look, it seems like you just purged your spirit. Purged, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I've been thinking a lot about it because there's this one thing that – it really bothers me that I didn't say. Do you anything. have one? What yeah. is it? Well, I, I when I was in, uh, I'm not gonna say it was college or grad school. One of them. Uh, I don't want to eat the person, but um, they. <laughs> Russell thinks uh, everyone in his life is listening is at listening. home. Just it could be. Um, uh, or someone will send it to them. Um, but I was doing a show, and it was one of those shows where I had like four or five monologues in, and a professor was uh, coaching the show and also working with me individually on these monologues, but. Kind of like dropped off the radar for like the last two and a half weeks of rehearsals Mm -hmm. and then just came to the final dress rehearsal and then sent me a note after seeing the dress rehearsal being like, hey, uh, would love to talk to you tomorrow uh, here are my office hours like come in, blah, 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 came in and basically said to me. I really don't think you're doing a very good job in the opening night of the show opening night of the show. I don't think you're doing a very good job. and I'm in school. I'm paying. I'm like in the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very vulnerable thing. They coached me on this, and then they dropped off the radar, and they didn't offer anything specific. And that's what I was going to say. They didn't offer yeah. anything. It was basically like a foregone. Like this is gonna. This is not good. And right. uh, it's. I'm just really disappointed. Like it didn't really. I just don't feel. And so they said the only monologue that you did. They mentioned one specific that they felt good about that was the only one i hadn't worked on them with and i was livid wow. and now as more i was technically, at the time did you technically, go i'm sorry technically an adult no i was just i just was so low confidence already in this program and then to then be going into opening night with that kind right, of thing right. uh, it, it was like it, and now looking back this person fucking sucks this person is someone who has a good name kind of in their what they do mm-hmm. a good reputation they work at some nice theater company and but they're full of shit and they're just kind of an ass kicker kisser and they've just kind of they don't really know much and they're bad teacher and i just Clearly. wish i could been like fuck you you don't know anything you didn't really help anyone and no one here really likes you they just like your resume mm-hmm. and and that's kind of and i feel very strong about this person because people i know still really love them and i think they're a bullshit person mm-hmm. and i think they're phony and they don't know a lot, and they've no, they've worked their way into kissing the right three asses in the theater community, mm. and uh, they work all the time, and everyone loves them, and fuck off. Right. Let's, I let's, almost said their name. 
<laughs> do Let's it. have him on but the pod, and I'll, I'll get to the bottom of this. My conspiracy in my head, though, too, is that the week before, I went to a party that they had hosted, and I was really drunk, and I got in a conversation with their partner, who I thought was really boring, and I totally stopped listening to what their partner was saying, and I like looked away, and then I realized that this person was still talking to me, and I was like, oh. And then I looked back, and then I was like, and then I just walked away from them, <gasps> and I think so. I'm my conspiracy theory is, is that it? I offended their partner right. by thinking that they're boring, and he is boring, and um, uh, <laughs> and that they then had this weird thing. Mm. But that's conspiracy, and I think that's not true. I think this person is just ultimately uh, a shitty person. Yeah, they suck. Yeah. Anyways, tell them how you really feel, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll we'll. F- Round this up real quick. Uh, this has got to stop. This has got to stop. Do you have a this has got to stop for us today? Oh, what is this has got to stop? Hold up. I love this. I, I, love, I love finding out who read the email and who didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you knew Something that's got to stop. Something that in society, it could be, uh, I always have bad examples for this. Wedding registries, people saying, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, bigger things, anything. Something that's like, enough of this. Oh, this has got to stop. Uh, new comics offering me their business card. Perfect. That's a perfect one. Yes. Ugh. Ugh, and... Ugh. Are they stand-ups? <laughs> Are, Are you they stand-ups? I, 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 I do have business cards. What? what? Well, it's fine to have a business sure. card. Don't give it to another comic. Yeah, of where course. Are you put that? Where you what, not, get so many of people. Are I think it's so it. funny. I at LOL sometimes I would give out cards at the end. I, I've kind of moved past that stage, but sometimes people would give me their business card back, uh, and I'd be like. No. What? Yeah, yeah, what are you talking yeah, yeah. about? I don't know what you do. I don't, oh, that's just in case you need interior design. You need a dentist that's that's, that's almost like when, when uh, like after shows you're telling people to you know follow me and they, and they they come up. Hey, I just follow you. Make sure you follow me back. And you're like, no. Why? Why? What do you do? That's you're not, not interested. Works. I think there's a thing with like hustle culture where there's like a degree of like, hey, we're both. Like when people will be like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm like, as a comic, I'm not your audit, I'm not your uh, market. All. Yeah, nice. you, I'm not. F- I'm, I don't have time. Yeah. I'm doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a good one. Yeah, I. Uh, you don't have business cards. No. Well, I do for my like work, but I. Oh God, you know, I want one of those. <laughs> your, your other yeah. life. Yeah. Do you have business cards? No, I haven't had a business card since '97. I had I had this logo, and it said the. Uh, the dean of comedy, oh, Dean oh, Edwards, oh, wow. with my with my with my that's voicemail good. number. Because that's before before oh, like yeah. you had everybody had a, a a voicemail that anyone could call and it would yeah. That's I haven't had that in these a days. Long if people want to find you, they'll find you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel the same exactly. way about spelling your Instagram handle at the end. That people will find you. Right. Yeah. Find you. Right. Well, um, how about if it, how about this is another uh, what was it just what's the name of this? This segment? has got to stop. This has got to stop. How about using a name that people can spell and not some weird thing that you now have to spell out and add underscores and that's all why this. I don't do it. My name's Joe Marco, and I'm like G I A. Yeah. Never mind. Right. Just right. never mind. Right. Find me on the schedule if you like me. Yeah. Google it. You'll find. No it. one's like I love that comedian. I want to follow their career. Right. I can't find their name. Right. They're going to find it. They're going to yeah. find it. Uh, and then our final segment. You better count your blessings. You better count your yeah, blessings. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were yeah. a singer. Oh, like Wikipedia was yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Russell, do you have a blessing yes, to share? I, uh, so I went away this weekend with some family, like Placid. And got some good quality done with uh, my nephews and my nephew Cooper. Um, he's such a, a sweet, sensitive soul. He, um, we were watching Star Wars, and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna go." There was a hot tub. I was like, "I'm gonna take a break and go to the hot tub." And he, like, ten minutes later, he came and he's like, "He's like, hey, I'm like, you know, really sad about Star Wars. There's piece of people died in it, you know." And I was like, "Oh, okay, you know." Uh, well, you know, he's, he's just turned seven and I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll get out and we can go back and watch. So we go back and watch and he's like, he's like, Hey, Uncle Russ, I need to tell you something. I was like, what? And he goes, I wasn't sad about the people dying in Star Wars. I was, <laughs> this is what he said. I was sad because time is moving so fast and the trip is almost done and I don't want it to be done. Oh, wow. And I feel like I miss you already. And I was like, wow. I was like a little, <laughs> little sweet. Sweet, sensitive, anxious soul. Wow. Um, but anyway, so I had a good uh, time connecting with him this weekend, and and his brother's wild, but well, a good time too, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, 
My, um, my nephew I, Cooper. I can appreciate yes. that. Yes. No, that's, no, that was beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. so beautiful sweet. Moment. Yeah. Just have Time kids already, so you fast. son of a bitch. Just have a kid. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, I, I won't read this message. Well, so I did Philly Punchline uh-huh. uh, last night, nice. and we have we have more and more podcasts. Debbie Downsiders, that's yes. what we call them. Yeah. By the way, if you're listening, I forgot to say this. If you're a fan of the podcast, oh. check out the Patreon, yeah. patreon.com slash downside to listen to bonus episodes, our AMP episodes, which are live every tuesday 4 to 5 p.m est yes uh but we're building once we hit 50 patreon subscribers i'm getting an uncle function tattoo Mm -hmm. once we hit 100 russell is doing so many shrooms he's gonna see god yeah but uh it's it's so cool to have we've been doing this podcast over a year it is a lot of work but it's so great. With the, and then you sit in the front row. Yes, and I wish you yes. could be there to see the people well, come up. And they're meet, like, I'm I a Debbie meet, Downsider. I got to meet the woman in L.A. You got to meet the woman in L.A. That was very cool. I talk about my girlfriend on stage and they go, Tova. Oh, man, and it's like, it, that's a mixed blessing. But yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> because I say some very mean things. But uh, there, was a, there was a woman, I won't read the full message. Her name was Caitlin. Uh, hello, Caitlin. She just wrote something very sweet. She came up and she was like, she was crying. Mm. And was like so happy. And it was one of those things where... You mean so it's like you were able to make someone feel so, so good? Yeah. yeah. And it's like it's an overwhelming because it feels like a responsibility. And I'm like, thank God the show was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but she was crying and she demanded a refund. And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, Caitlin, uh, uh, thank you for the very sweet message. And it's very moving. I can see how celebrities start thinking that they're important. Mm, yeah. And uh, 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 I don't want to. It's hard. You talk about it, and it feels like you're like self-aggrandizing in a way. You want to be humble, but it meant a lot. It just meant a lot to see someone moved yeah. by what I did, yes. and I'm glad I did that. And you yeah. made me feel very special, yeah. and I hope I bring laughter to your life. Yeah, yeah. and 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 clearly you you do, and you did, uh, based on her emotional output and reaction. You know, I, uh, not to sound all serious, but this. There's power in what we do, right? As as yeah. as performers, especially as uh, I think stand up comedy um, is healing. You know, especially sure. in with everything that we're dealing with in the world, people are so stressed. We all just came out of the last two years that some people felt were very traumatic because it wasn't just being stuck in the house, but it was also the social upheavals and and, and everything else coupled, right? Yeah, and. To, to get to just go out, um, you're in people's ears wh- while they're, you know, living life, whether it's, you know, working out on a treadmill or, yeah. or walking, to, heading to work or driving to work or laying in their bed, right? So when you actually, when, when someone can go and experience you in real time in the physical three dimensions, that's that's a beautiful thing, man. And I, I, I honestly, there there is power in that. I don't think it's self aggrandizing. I think it's surreal. To, to, it's like it is very surreal. If if when you know Tova got annoyed, I put uh, I, I didn't I didn't bunch the socks together. I just put them kind of one by one in the drawer, and she was annoyed. And I I wanted to be like, you know what, Caitlin would think about this. <laughs> Caitlin would say, wow, you get to live with John Marco? Why don't you shut the fuck up? Yeah, that's a healthy way now to live Now, that's self aggrandizing That's a healthy way to live your life. You should give that for every fight you get but in. But comedically, it's For every so fight important. you get in, you get in a fight with a cashier. You're like, you know what Caitlin would say right, about this? Right, exactly. Shout Caitlin out to Caitlin. Caitlin would make sure that my food was cooked exactly, properly. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, do you have a blessing to close us out? Blessing. Um, it's a blessing to be here, man. I appreciate y'all inviting me. I love I love tossing it up with, with my fellow funny people. Um, this weekend, I had a great show had great shows in albany but what made one even more special was uh was my my cousin i forgot he lived up in uh the albany uh area and so maybe i get to the club i look at my phone hey i'm uh i'm i'm sitting you know a few rows back and him being there actually made me detour um and i wound up doing 20 minutes on moving so much as a kid and and uh my family and his family and our and our mothers that were sisters or our you know my aunt and my mother and just i wound up doing 20 25 minutes of material that weren't weren't planned yeah, yeah, yeah. um things that i might have jotted down over the years but never really that's awesome. ventured into that's cool and it turned into 
by the end of, by the time I had to land the plane, I was like, dude, I I, I haven't even gotten to the closer yet, you yeah, know. And, yeah, and so yeah. I, I I went a little long, but it was it was such a it was a wonderful uh, wonderful experience. And of course, right before I went on stage, I said to myself, you should record this. You really should record this. And I was like, oh, I don't need to record this. I'm uh-huh, living. Uh-huh. And then of course, you know, I'm recording fucking everything. Yeah, I tell you. And of course, I, I recorded the next night. Strong, but not as good as the first time. You, you tell your it, cousin, you know? like, "Hey, I need you to come yeah, back for this yeah, one. Come back, <laughs> and <you> sit up. <laughs> we got. Yeah. Um, all right, this is coming out uh, November eighth. Is there anything you would like to plug? Um, let me see. Uh, shoot, let me see. Look, I'm opening my calendar. Here, you look. Right I'll, now. I'll go. I'll go first because I got to pull yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah. So this is a big, big week for me, guys. I am uh, headlining the Midnight Theater which is a lot of seats. This is the Midnight Theater, November 10th, Thursday, November 10th at 7.30 p.m. Um, It's a big show. I think there's 140 seats. We're trying to sell it out, so please come to that. And then November 11th and November 12th, I'm headlining Bananas Comedy Club uh, uh, in Hasbrook Heights. I've been there before. Always a good time. Uh, I got a good story about bananas. Maybe I'll tell in the next episode. And then November 13th, this is all part of New York Comedy Festival. Not bananas, but... There's a live taping of The Downside at Sesh Comedy Club. That's November 13th at 6 p.m. So get your tickets now. They're pretty cheap. And last live episode we did was fucking fantastic. And yeah. we were pretty much sold out. So nice. come to that. Links yes. in bio for all. And then for me, uh, right after that, I get the tickets to that. And then come see Uncle Function at New York. Uh, oh, no. Uncle Function at uh, Asylum NYC that night at 9.30 p.m. Sunday, November 13th. Great. And any plugs from you? For me, yeah, actually, uh, uh, I remember that I'm part of a... We have Race, the movie, the play, the reading. is going to be three nights in a row. It's a play uh, that I'm part of um, and also uh, co-starring in with uh, Brett Raybould and uh, written by he and Christian Durant. And uh, we're, 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 I think, the first play ever um, running during... It's actually the reading, though. Um, during the uh, New York Comedy Festival, we'll be at uh, Stand Up New York... November 10th, 11th, and 12th, Stand Up New York. You can go to uh, Stand Up New York's website to get your tickets. Um, this will sell out. We, uh, like I said, we we're we're now an award. We won a couple of awards: best actor, best uh, original uh, written play, and we should have won best play, um, but we ran long because we got a lot of laughs um, during the New York Theater Festival. Mm. So we're we're now part of the uh, New York Comedy Festival, and uh, this I, I guarantee you, it's it's a it's a spoof. Of um, of Osc- of of race bait Oscar movies, everything yeah. from the Green Book yeah. to uh, Driving Miss Daisy and the Help. We we goof on all of these, and it's it's a it's a really it's a very funny but poignant and and uh, well written piece of theater. And we're doing this reading three nights in a row at Stand Up New York. Very Great. Cool. Uh, well, thank you again. Go to patreoncom slash downside. And uh, remember, we're all part of the organism of humanity, and time and space just flow, and it's a beautiful infinity, and uh, I think the shrooms are still (laughs) in my system. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With Gianmarco Cerezi.